Hi everybody, Sebastian here again, ready to walk you through getting started with the HAL Robotics Framework Beta. In the last tutorial, we downloaded and installed the McNeil client for the framework, and what that's done is created this new HAL Robotics tab in Grasshopper. There are lots of components here that we'll go through in future tutorials, um, but I'm going to get started with the basics. So first things first, I need to bring myself in a robot. Under cell, you're going to find a component robot. I'm going to pop that in my canvas, and you'll see it has this funny little symbol next to it. That symbol there means that there's a pop-up window associated with the component. So if I double click on it, in this case, that's the robot catalog. There are a number of robots here that we can choose from, uh, from ABB and Universal. We will be adding more and more brands as time goes on. Uh, I'm going to pick the IRB 1200-70 because that's what's sitting next to me in the office right now. I'm going to hit OK and it's going to be brought in. All of the joints here you can see are labelled and we've got the ranges indicated around them as well. A robot's all well and good, but a robot doesn't do much unless it has a tool. So again, under the cell, tab, we're going to grab tool. You'll see that it's got this little symbol still. So if I double click on that, you can see it opens a tool catalog. There are considerably fewer tools. Um, we will be adding more as we, as we progress, but more importantly, we'll be teaching you how to add your own tools, uh, create and add your own tools in one of the next tutorials that we release. So I'm going to bring in this extruder. Uh, and what we need to do really is associate the two together, so mount the tool on the robot. To do that, we assemble them, and assemble is another new type of component. You can see underneath here, it's labeled template one out of two. Templates are uh, slight variations on a component. So if I right click here, you'll see that either I can assemble a generic mechanism which is an association of parts and joints um, to create a whole new robot, or a composite mechanism, which is putting two different machines together. In this case, that's exactly what we want to do. It's add a manipulator and a tool together. So I'm going to click on composite mechanism. The component changes slightly. I can bring my robot into the parent, the object that we want to attach to, and tool what we want to attach. So those are plugged in and you'll see there immediately the end effector, the extruder in this case, jumps onto the end of the robot because his end effector is ticked to true. Um, that's the default. It's good practice, generally speaking, to hide anything that we're no longer using. It avoids any duplication in the viewport. Um, and we have our robot ready to do something. Well, what do we want it to do? Simple case, I'm going to get it to follow a curve. So in Rhino, I've actually prepared a curve here. So I'm going to bring that in to Grasshopper by setting one curve in the component. And I'm going to hide it again here in Rhino. Now, a robot moves by going to different targets. So the component we're looking for to make it move to different places on this on this curve is called targets. You'll find it under the motion tab here. And once again, we'll see that target is a template component. So we can right click on it and you'll see that as well as being able to create a target from a frame or from joint positions, we can also create it from curve. Uh, if I click on that, it's asking me for a curve as an input. Anywhere you see this little arrow means it's a necessary input. So I'm going to give it the curve that it requires. And you'll see all of a sudden we have actual targets placed at the inflection points of the curve. Um, to get a robot to go to these targets, however, we need to instruct it to move. We need to program it. So under the programming tab, we're going to find move. I'm going to bring that in, and it's asking me for a set of targets. Well, 
I've just created some of those, so here it goes. There are lots of settings we'll play with uh, in future tutorials, but I'll leave all the defaults as they are for the time being. Once again, hide anything that isn't in use. Now, we need to somehow associate this robot with its end effector and the movement. And the thing that does that uh, is called a controller. So I'm going to come into the cell and grab myself a controller component. Again, we can see it's got a little pop-up. Double click on that. And I know that the controller I have sat next to me here is an ABB IRC5 Compact V2. Going to select that, hit OK. It's going to come in. It's got geometry with it that we can move around. Um, but rather than faff with that now, I'm just going to hide it. Uh, we don't need to see that. We can see the controller component here is asking for a robot, something that's going to do uh, do the motion, and it's asking for a procedure, something something for that robot to do. So I'm going to give it the motion, and we'll see there that all of a sudden this initial motion has also been added in from the starting point to that first target. What we really want to do now is execute, simulate this thing. So I'm going to come up to control, execute, bring that in. It's asking me for a controller, which I can willingly give it. And it's asking me for an execution control. If I hover over there, uh, you can see the type of input it wants. There are two ways of doing this. Uh, the most simple is to grab yourself an execution bar here, which is already pre-programmed with a few little buttons, play, pause, loop, backwards, forwards, uh, and reset. So as soon as I plug that in, I'm going to hide the robot that's not doing anything. And I'm going to hit play. And you'll see here that the robot starts moving. It starts in a bit of an awkward position. But it'll then work its way through all of our target points with the appropriate accelerations between each one. And once it gets to the end, it'll stop. So we can then either reset it or set it to loop, and it will continue to do that over and over again. The other thing that we'd like to do as a starting point is to export this robot program to a real robot. So to do that, we're going to come up to Program again and Export. I'm going to pop that in. And you'll see this is another new type of component that has shift plus arrow on it. These variation components are very similar to the templates, but are much su more subtle differences. So generally, a variation means there'll be more or less inputs, but the action will be the same. So in this case, if I press shift and up, you'll see that all the previous inputs were there. The effect of the component is going to be the same, but it's asking me for an extra couple of inputs, a mode and a procedure to export. Um, I'm going to keep this simple, and I'm going to return to the, to the simple version, which is asking me for a controller. I've got one of those, a path, which is just a place that I want to export my robot code to. And it's asking me for a run. Well, run is simply, if I hover over that, a Boolean. So I'm going to grab myself a button, which I can plug into the run, which I can plug into the run node. And when I click the button there, the robot code for that has just been exported to this file there. And that's all there is to it. We've just programmed a robot, simulated to make sure that it was doable in under 10 minutes. Um, so we will, in the near future, be producing a whole load more tutorials to delve much, much deeper into the settings and all the different options that we've uh, created here. But hopefully this is enough to get you started and to get you playing with the HAL Robotics Framework beta. I'll see you again next time. Bye.